grace, you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And in your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Lord, be blessed thy grace to you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us our salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Almighty ever living God, who consecrated the first fruits of your apostles by the blood of St. James, grant we pray that your church may be strengthened by his confession of faith and constantly sustained by his protection to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther towards Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he still persisted. Please let, my, let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, for the sake of those 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying at a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. And do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. See and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus my knowledge, the only thing Jesus' disciples ever asked him to teach them was how to pray. At first, this seems a strange request, since all of them were Jews, and therefore not strangers to the idea or the experience of praying. 
in all probability, they had prayed from their youth up. But then they came under the influence of Jesus. And they saw what a difference prayer made in his life. They saw that prayer was more than just a form or a technique. They saw that prayer is based on a relationship, a relationship that has the power to transform our lives and our world. Observing all this, they realized that they knew very little about prayer after all. And so they asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. I would dare say that many of us feel like those first century disciples. We doubt if we really know how to pray. And so today we say to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. I believe that there are at least four things that Jesus wants to teach us about prayer from today's gospel. First, we need to learn that prayer is rooted in a relationship. When Jesus prayed, he did not spend his time begging a reluctant deity. No, he conversed with a loving Father. All through his life and teaching runs the same message. God is our Father. We are his children. You and I will never really learn to pray until we have grasped the truth of that relationship that God is indeed our Father. And as our Father, there is no need for us to beg or to try and persuade him to be loving toward us. He's our Father. He knows our every need. And his greatest concern is for our highest good. Second, if God is my Father and God is your Father, then we also share a relationship with one another. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We can never forget that truth when we pray because true prayer is never self-centered. The whole family must be considered. Have you noticed, for instance, that in the model prayer of Jesus, only plural pronouns are used? Our Father, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You see, there is a social dimension to prayer that can be neither be ignored nor denied. God has many children, and we have many siblings. It makes no sense for us to ask our Heavenly Father for riches when some of his children don't even have enough to eat. It makes no sense for us to ask him for our daily bread if we are unwilling to share from our abundance with those who have virtually nothing. 
So, when we pray, we must remember that we belong to a very large family and never pray selfishly only for ourselves, but always take into account the effect our personal petitions will have on the lives of others. Third, we need to learn that prayer must be entered into with patience and perseverance. Thy kingdom come! Thy kingdom come! That's a big request, and it's not going to be answered overnight. That's why Jesus instructs us to keep on asking, to keep on seeking, and to keep on knocking. We can't just pray once and then sit back, fold our arms, and wait for our prayer to be answered. No, we must perseveringly and patiently storm heaven with our prayers that the things we truly desire must be sought after with all our heart. Finally, the fourth lesson. We must learn to pray submissively. We must learn to pray submissively. Real prayer is never so foolish as to think that it can change the mind of God or impose our will above His. No, real prayer is instead an attempt to know our Heavenly Father's strength and to find our place, our place, in the fulfillment of His purpose. Be it done unto me according to thy word. The beautiful prayer of Our Lady and Jesus the night before he dies, prays, not my will, but your will be done. When we pray, we must surrender to God in complete trust. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray to you as our Father. Teach us to pray to you with selfless hearts. Teach us to pray to you with perseverance, patience, and total trust. St. James the Greater, our holy patron, pray for us.
with trust and joyful expectation, let us present all our needs to the Father through the intercession of our patron, Saint James the Greater. That the people of God throughout the world may persevere in prayer to their Father, who knows how to give them good things. Be <coughs> pleased to hear us. Lord, be us one year our prayer. That following the example of the saints, the spiritual leaders of the church may seek God's kingdom above everything else and being inspiring witnesses of a holy life. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. That seeking the wisdom of the saints, government leaders may put their own interests aside and make whatever sacrifices are necessary to serve those who elected them. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask to hear our prayer the parish of the Proto-Cathedral of St. James the Greater may always strive to be a place of authentic Catholic teaching, courageous in the line of persecution, and charitable to all. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. That those who are ill may be strengthened and comforted, and that those who have died may be received into eternal life through the intercession of St. James. Be pleased to hear us. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers that we offer to you this day through the intercession of St. James the Greater, our holy patron, and in the name and power of Jesus Christ the Lord.
Great brother, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hearts for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Cleanse us, Lord, by the saving baptism of your Son's passion, so that on the feast of St. James the Greater, when you, whom you will to be the first among the apostles to drink of Christ's chalice of suffering, we may offer a sacrifice pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always so that it may be governed by those who have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, his assistant bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them 
for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Thetis, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Davian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you've chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to your God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, For her noster, we ask in grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who 
said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And in your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word and my soul.
Let us pray. Help us, O oh Lord, we pray, to the intercession of the blessed Apostle James, on whose feast day we have received with joy your holy gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Proto Cathedral is still accepting uh, job applications for the full time position of custodian of buildings and grounds here at the Proto Cathedral. If you or someone you know is qualified and interested uh, in that position, please contact the parish office. Next weekend, after all masses, Andrew Still, our new pastoral assistant for faith formation will be holding a catechist recruitment drive. Please note the flyer in this Sunday's bulletin. Teachers are yet needed in grades 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. If you want faith formation, that means someone of, some of you are going to have to volunteer to teach our young people. So, this will be a good opportunity also to meet Andrew next weekend, if you haven't already, to ask him questions and to learn more about our catechet catechetical needs here at the Proto-Cathedral. <clears throat> there is no hospitality in the lower hall after Mass because, as you know, the parish picnic will now take place out in the uh, little piazza because the picnic is taking place there. This door, this west door, is not available for you to exit this morning. You must exit either through the east door or through the main doors of the church. And I'm thanking you in advance for being kind to the usher who is standing at the west door to remind you that you can't exit through that door. I want to uh, take a moment just to welcome to the Proto-Cathedral Father Anthony. He doesn't probably need an introduction because many of you know him. He was probably many of your pastor at Holy Rosary, the wonderful parish, the Dominican parish in uh, Portland. Father is a Dominican from Western province. He spent, was it the last five or six years, Father? Five? The last five years as rector of the cathedral up in Anchorage, Alaska, and has just assumed a new assignment back in sunny Los Angeles in Hollywood, no less, right before the Hollywood Hills sign, I've been to this convent, where he's going to be the chaplain uh, to a contemplative community of Dominican sisters who make the best candy in the world. So the next time we see Father, he may be bigger. There may be more of him. Anyway, welcome, Father, to the Proto-Cathedral. God bless. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.